So, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We are in week three of our series about the Ten Commandments. We're going to be on the second commandment today, which has to do with idol worship. So just to give you an idea of what we're discussing, as I step away and you look at the images on the wall, that's idol worship. Or is it? We're going to find out. So what does the second commandment say? If you go to Exodus 24 through 6. You shall not make for yourself a graven image, or any likeness, or anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beyond, beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands of those who love me and keep my commandments. The second commandment goes to the heart of our relationship with our Creator. It deals with several crucial questions. How do we perceive God? How do we explain Him to ourselves and to others? Idols are representations of false non-existent gods, but maybe we use pictures or other images that represent the true God. Above all, what is the proper way to worship the only true God? In the first commandment we learned that it is wrong to allow any created thing, including a human being, to become more important to us than our Creator. The second commandment differs from the first in that it explains that in our worship we must not reduce God to a likeness of a physical object. Doing so is unquestionably unacceptable to God. The second commandment explicitly forbids the use of any type of inanimate or lifeless imagery. Any likeness or anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. In the worship of the living God, yet God did not create on earth a likeness of himself in humans. He specifically tells us that he created man in his own image. In the image of God, created he him, male and female, created he them. Genesis 1.27 People fashion idols and images out of metal, wood, stone, and plastic. They also fashion idols mentally. That is, they create false ideas about God. These ideas about God are man's feeble attempt to describe God. The Bible tells us, touching the Almighty, we cannot find him out. Jobs 37.23 at the present time, we see, as Paul said, through a glass darkly, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. God has revealed to man what he needs to know. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong us and to our children forever, that we may do all the worlds of, the, of this law, Deuteronomy 29, 29. When one creates an idol, or some subjective concept of God, he has taken upon himself a right that only God possesses. God alone knows what he is and how he appears and thinks. To whom then will we liken God? Or what likeness will ye unto, compare unto him? Isaiah 40, 13. <coughs> Any idol or concept of God that is inaccurate is an idol, a violation of the second commandment. Now, if that being said, and I know you're asking yourself, okay, so do Christians who have images of Jesus in their homes and churches are in violation of the second commandment? As you look behind me. The answer is this. The Catholic Church, during the Council of Trent in 1545, issued a clear statement concerning images and statues. According to the 25th session of this general council, the images of Christ and all the saints are to be had and retain particularly in churches and do honor and veneration are to be given them not that any divinity or virtue is believed to be in them on account of which they are to be worshipped or that anything is to be asked of them or that trust is to be reposed in images as was of old by the, gen by the Gentiles who placed their hopes in idols but because the honor which is shown them is referred to the prototypes which these images represent. So that we, through the images, 
which we kiss or bend the knee, adore Christ and venerate the saints whom they represent. The canon and the decrees of the Council of Trent. The church does not compel her members to kneel or pray before images. No one is allowed by the church to pray to images since they have no ears to hear or power to help us. The church allows for the veneration of images as long as the honor is dedicated towards Christ and his saints. So what does veneration mean? It's a special act of honoring a saint, an angel or a dead person who has been identified by a church committee as singular in the traditions of the religion. Veneration is often shown outwardly by respectfully bowing or making the sign of the cross before a saint's icon, relic, or statue. These items may also be kissed. Since we are not kneeling or praying before the statues or images of Jesus, but we are kneeling before them or making the sign of the cross or kissing them out of a show of respect, we are, wor we are not worshipping them. The difference is when the people made the golden calf while Moses was on the mountain, they were dancing around it, they were praying to it, they were making sacrifices to it, they were worshipping it. So in closing, we are as Christians... We as Christians are not breaking the second commandment. The pictures and statues of Jesus we have in our homes and churches are not being worshipped. We are only honoring them as part of the, our faith. <coughs> we only worship the one true God, our Lord Jesus Christ. Worship is a crucial part <coughs> of our lives. Because it is so important, God has given one of the ten commandments to us who we, to tell us who we are to worship. And he's only giving another one of the Ten Commandments to teach us how to worship. By his grace, let's take those commandments seriously and so honor the God of our salvation. And now, with our benediction, Pastor Jessica. Second, the second commandment teaches us, um, You shall not make yourself an, an image in the form of anything in heaven above, on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them and worship them, for I, for I, Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for sins of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but show love to the thousand generations of those who love and keep my commandments. The images of Jesus and the other holies are to be respected, not to be worshipped as other, as other gods or, and made offerings to them. Meaning, you can't make something and name it your god, name it your god of worship. The Egyptians did that a long time ago, along with the Romans. For them, they had a God for everything. There was a God for the underworld. They had a God for sun. They had a God for this. They had a God for that. There were nothing. It was nothing more than a man-made thing. You couldn't hear them. Couldn't talk to them. Couldn't answer their prayers. It was just something man-made. The best description was the golden calf because they couldn't. They made it because they couldn't see God, and they didn't want to wait for Moses to come down. Come down, and they went ahead and they had Aaron make a golden calf and dance around and <coughs> make offerings to it. Again, it was a man-made thing. It wasn't God. There's never, there's never a reason to make. Make yourself an idol and pray and worship it. You have a father to ask and pray and worship. You have God to you have God to ask to ask questions. You have God to worship. You have God to pray to. Don't pray to a boulder and say, "Hey, this is my God." That's not a God. That's not a God. That's a boulder. That is not a God. God is up there. You know, you can't go ahead and you can't make. Something about that is mine. That is what he's telling you. This, I, you know, I can't go, oh, look, this is my God. No. 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 It doesn't work out. You have a God. <sighs> you have a God. Jesus. 
You can't make an, you can't make an unknown all known being is pretty much what I'm getting at. You can't make one. There is only one. Thank you. God bless.